welcome to this broadcast with Dr. Isaac O. Crown, the presiding bishop, the Kula People's Church for All Nations, an engineer sent and anointed by God with the apostolic mandate to take the restoration of God's glory to the total man. A prolific author, songwriter, TV analyst, management consultant, and a prophet of God. His ministrations have brought salvation, healings, and prosperity to thousands around the world. May you be transformed as you listen. Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Crown. Welcome to Living and Loving Platform. And I'm sure this broadcast has been such a blessing, particularly for the unmarried. In the subsequent weeks and months ahead, we'll be talking to people who are also married how you can have honeymoon for life. Honeymoon doesn't have to be for a few days. I am Dr. Isaac O'Crown, presiding bishop of the Church Church for All Nations. Today I'm talking about why do ladies have delay getting fiancés? Reasons for delay in getting life partner in ladies. The reasons for delay in getting life partner. Reasons for delay in getting life partner. In Africa and particularly Nigeria and our own country. As I travel around, I've met a lot of people. Matter of factly, about two weeks ago, I was in a meeting and I was quite surprised when I found a few people who consulted with me. Among them were adult ladies, 47, 48 years old or married, and was telling me my younger sister hasn't married. Even my own brother, who is also in his late his uh, mid forties, hadn't married. In our family, we are about four or five. Only one person is married, and as old as 47, 48. I'm dealing with a young professional person who is even in his fifties. He had never married before, and never he had had only one relationship that was not successful and in Africa it's very very easy we put everything down to demons everything down to witchcraft everything down to somebody in the village if I came online and I say I want to show you today the reason why you are still 40 and you don't have a husband is because there is a masquerade in your father's house there is the younger brother of your junior sister's auntie's cousin that has been running against your, your, your destiny is very appealing and many of you listening to me have been cheap commodity in the hands of next to nothing prophets and seers you patronize so many prayer houses, so many so-called prophet and prophetesses houses, and for every little thing that happens, they have one demon to make reference to, they have one enemy to make a reference to. Look, the Bible says in Colossians chapter 1 verse number 15, and it wouldn't matter who is listening to me and who is getting a little bit, you know, hedgy. He says, and has delivered us, Colossians 2, from the powers of darkness and translated us to the kingdom of his dear son and he's talking about Jesus Christ he said in the same Colossians concerning Christ that he destroyed principalities and powers and he made an open show of them don't tell me that a child of God who have Christ in his life is so cheap. Colossians 1.13 He has delivered us from the power of darkness and translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. If Christ genuinely, sincerely, scripturally delivered you from the power of darkness, I don't understand this upside down logic why people are running up and down because of one witch in the village, because of one wicked uncle on the street. But I'm going to be breaking for you practical reasons why people 
don't sometimes get into relationship early outside of all this devil and demon scare. In Africa, people tend to believe far, far more in the power of the devil to hurt them than they do in the power of God to deliver them. They just run to touch and talk about deliverance, 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 deliverance. They fear the devil more than they even fear God. And very many that I have come in contact with, years upon years, they are patronizing prayer houses and prophet and prophetesses houses for the same problem. If truly the prayer you are praying was getting answered, after the first few months, it should have been over. Two, three years is the same issue you are patronizing prayer house for. Something must be wrong. He said in James 2 that if you ask and you do not receive, it is because you ask wrongly. Not many people want to admit that they have been asking wrongly. Rather, it is the devil that has just gotten more powerful. The enemies in their company have just gotten more sophisticated. James 4.3 You ask and you didn't receive. It's not because the devil is more powerful. It's not because the witches in your company are more sophisticated. He said, but because you ask and miss, you ask wrongly, you didn't ask properly, you didn't get your theology correct, you didn't get your Bible understanding and Bible sense correct. So when you ask, you don't get. It's not because the devil suddenly become more powerful. What are those reasons? I will be listening for you about of them. Proverbs chapter 18 verse 24 says, a man that we have many friends must make himself friendly. That's a formula. You are looking for friends, make yourself friendly. The way a number of people live their life, they live their life in isolation, withdrawn. And they will be telling people, that's me, that's who I am. Well, if you live a withdrawn life, you are also going to have withdrawn company. You won't have people around your life. Number one reason is that people don't intermingle. Hebrews 10, 24 and 25, forget not the assembly, forsake not the assembly of one another. If you are a believer, you are born again, you should be found around where believers are, particularly those of your age grade. There is mate in terms of age. There are mates in terms of status. If you are between 13 and 20, your age mate are people within that same age bracket. You should be found around people of your own age bracket. Because the type of person that sees you determines the type of favor you receive in life. The places where you show up determines the type of offers you, you have. If you don't write an application to a university, they will not offer you employment. They have to see your application first before they know that you are employable. King Artaxerxes will never have married Esther if Esther did not show up when the announcement went around that the king is looking for a maid. Maid who found themselves a suitable maid, show up. If the king never saw her, he would never have made up his mind that he wanted to marry her. Number one problem is people don't make themselves friendly enough. Number two is those who are natural introverts, they are too shy to relate in the right places. I didn't say within the right age. In the first submission, which I say, people are not making themselves friendly. I said, you should be found within your age bracket. The second one is your status bracket. If you are not married, age is not the issue now. You should be found around unmarried people. That is your status is unmarried, not age now. You might be 30, 42, 43, 27 you should be friendly among people of the same status. There used to be a lady who stayed for quite long and really never got a husband. 
But as a young girl, I draw attention several times that you have a lot of sisters in your family, children of the same parent, and all of them are married and fairly elderly. You are still a young girl. Most of the time, you are in their company. 95% of your life is around them. You go to markets together. You go to church together. You go to social functions together. You stay together in the house. You follow with them in the market. You are the one they are around and you dress like a woman that already has two or three kids. Anybody looking at you will misunderstand you for a married woman. Going with your life like this will not open you up to potentials who can see you. They are simple, common mistakes of common sense. Not devils. Not witches anywhere. And it took so long. Nobody was talking to this lady about marriage. Because people don't even know that she wasn't married. She doesn't wear skirts like other girls do. She doesn't dress like a small young girl in the university or in the polytechnic. She's always dressing like mama with gele on top of her neck all the time. Said so the way you are going like this, people won't know that you are unmarried. Always in Iro and Buba, always wearing all these clothes that <coughs> mothers of kids wear. The third category, her people, particularly girls, who have led promiscuous lives. Promiscuous or promiscuity is girls that are growing up in their teen years, they want to be the one in town that everybody knows. They are in every party. They are in nightclubs. On campus, they know them as social girls. They are the happening girls. They are the ones that go for Abuja and go to the state capital for weekend. They are the ones that mingle around politicians and senators and all kinds of human beings. They are the ones who monopolize all the sugar daddies. They have the latest phones. They have the latest televisions in their room. People know them. They were the happening girls in town. And they thought they were having fantastic time. They are living their life to the maximum. They don't know that neighbors are watching. Suddenly now, he or she is done. For some boys too, people know you. You are a cultist when you are on campus. You are a thief among the neighborhood. You are among the thugs that politicians use. You are the one they have fun with knife, with gun, with all sorts of things. They know you to be on drugs. People have your record with them. Suddenly you think now you are grown up, it's time to have a wife. And because people already know the story of your past, everybody wants to avoid a liability. What is my solution for someone like that? Usually, now you are born again. Your salvation does not erase your history, but it erases your past. God doesn't take account of your past, but your history is still there. If you had a child outside of wedlock, the fact that you are born again doesn't mean that the child has died or that that you know, fact of history did not take place. So if you find yourself in that category, what do you believe? How do you cross that pattern? Joel chapter 2 verse 25, God says, I will restore the years that the canker worm has eaten. I have had a lady who got pregnant at 14 gave birth to a baby at 14, but then gave her life to Jesus Christ and squared up and became fantastic with the Lord. And then she was in the university serving God like no man business. And a young brother who had never been married before saw her and was interested in her and spoke to her. And because she was a sound believer to the core, she told him, well, if you say you are interested in me, she had a relationship. Then at some point, when they were getting close to marriage, she told the guy, well, just for me to tell you as a sincere person, I have had a child out of wedlock when I was just 14. And that guy said, what? I didn't know that. I can't start my life at that. He made her feel terrible like a prostitute and walk out of her life. And you know, guess what God did? Months after, a brother who never knew her before proposed to her, but this time around, a very solid brother. And when she told that brother, the brother said, well, God told me to come and meet you. It's not your past that is my problem. It's just you. God directed me to you and I'm interested in you. They were married and eventually even became men of God. So, you see, God can restore your past years that has been wasted, either as a boy or as a girl. The fourth category of people are those who grew 
as house girls or housemaids under very severe control. Parents nowadays sit their children to other people because they can't take care of those children. And they use you more like a slave in the house where you were working. You can't go out. You can't go to youth meeting in the church. You can't be where people of your age are. Even when they put you in school, they are paying your school fees. They tell you 10 minutes after school, if you don't arrive in the house, you will see hell. So your life is over controlled. You are growing up in their building. They didn't allow you to interact. Not because you are an introvert. Not because you are not outgoing. But you don't even have the means. Day and night, there is assignment for you to do at home. You are going from the market to the house, from washing clothes, from cleaning the house, from being sent on one errand or the other. Order, and when that is not happening, they are asking you to stay and make sure that Junior doesn't spoil things in the kitchen. So you don't even have a life of your own. Even when young boys see you outside, they show interest. Believers, good Christians see you show interest. They dare not come to the house of your master. Otherwise, you'll be thrown out of the house. And for some people, you stayed like that for so long, you gained your freedom. Maybe you went to polytechnic and by the time you graduate, you are now 29. You are now 30. You have advanced in age. It's not your fault that you are at where you are right now. Circumstances of your birth and life cause a delay in your life. But I have news for you and I'm praying for you if you are listening to me. Before the year we run out in the name of Jesus, God who is the restorer of wasted years will restore your years in the mighty name of Jesus. Miracle husband. I'm not talking about phony, foggy husband. Sound, well-meaning husband to be. We approach you and God will give you a testimony in the name of Jesus. If your amen is loud, let it leave the roof. The fifth category are people who are suffering from the right relationship today because when they were growing up, Two things happen. They grew up with class bias. I will explain that. That is what you call complex. Inferiority and superiority complex. There are parents who go to church, who raise up their kids, and they are quite well to do. And they feel like the people who live in their neighborhood or people who live in their church, they are too low below their class. And if their children, their daughter mixes with them, it's like if she's lowering her class. So they hold the girl tight to their chest, never allowing the child to intermingle because they look down on everybody else. Until the girl grows, grows whole, becomes 24, 25 they keep dreaming and looking for somebody, a child of somebody in their own status. There are not very many rich people. So it means that if you are very well above average, in a whole angwa, there may not be more than one or two people like you. And so, unfortunately for you, maybe they don't even have male children that you cannot match make your daughter though. So problems start. Sometimes class complex. And it is the opposite for some people. The sense of feeling unworthy. We are poor. My mother is selling frying kose and maimai by the roadside. You know, in this area where we are living in GRA, how can we mix with all the big, big men there? Let's just reserve ourselves. And that complex. Even when you go to church, you are afraid to go near people that are doing well, that are working in the banks, that have good business. You say, no, I don't want anybody to disgrace me because I don't have anything. Let me just stay in my small corner. You stay in your small corner until you are 35. And now you are desperate looking for a husband. Those are some of the mistakes people have made that prolong sometimes, not all the times. Why? They do not have a life partner in due season. You know, the Bible says that for everything, there is a season. And for every time, there is a purpose under the heaven. For every season under the heaven, there is a For every purpose under the heaven, there is a time. And for everything, there is a season. One of the reasons why you are not supposed to confine yourself is that there are people today who are governors and presidents of countries. Who have told us the story of they never even had shoe until they were 19 years old. Some of them sold granite before. To simply condemn a person because of their today means you are playing the God in their life. Thinking that their life can never rise above where it is. And if you are a parent listening to me, you better watch it. So that what you are thinking today is class does not become a prayer request tomorrow. When everybody else is gone and your daughter can't find their husband. Number six reasons are girls 
who are too greedy. They are always looking for somebody beyond their size. They have a model idea of the kind of life they want to live. So rather than looking for the right man, they are looking for rich men. Boys that are looking for rich girls. That is the reverse happening in our time. Because there seems to be a plethora of girls who don't have somebody to get married to. So you even have young boys, a lady who is the mother of five. Call me from another church for help. And I went there and uh, helped them. And while I was praying for her, she showed me the text message that a boy of 24 sent to her. Because that lady uh, is a widow right now. But she's quite okay. She's well to do. Lives in a fantastic house. Has cars. I mean, she's doing business. She's doing well. And the boy is writing her, please, Eskima, I've been admiring you for all this period of time. And I just want to show you that I'm in love with you. That is thinking like this woman that has everything but doesn't have a husband because the husband is dead. Maybe she will be tempted to want to have a small boy like me. Maybe to be as a sex partner or what partner. I don't even understand. This boy is still in the polytechnic, maybe in year one. An idiot like that. Stupid thinking greedy young boys and girls who don't want to grow with a young man. They are looking for somebody who is driving the latest jeep in the town. So that everything they call for and then they wait and wait and wait until all their mates who could have married them, take care of them, grow with them, have all grown up and found wives and husbands elsewhere. They are now their surplus to request. Those are part of the reason. You see, these are part of the reasons why people suffer delay. This is not like witchcraft that all those, uh, you know, backyard prophets sell you. You know, it's witchcraft. It is one uncle of yours. It is what all they are interested in is the money from your pocket and patronage. Number eight. Number seven. Unreasonable loyalty to unfaithful lying man. There are some people who, go, who are in a relationship. Their intention is not marriage. It is the goodies they are getting there. If you're a young girl, and you are good looking, you have all the right shape he likes, what he wants with you is sexual relationship, not marriage. He already has his wife hidden somewhere, he didn't even tell you. So, one year pass, two years pass, three years pass, he's just giving you promises, promises, promises that is unending. And because you are not smart enough to detect it, you are, on, you are loyal to an unfaithful man who is just lying to you or an unfaithful girl who is just lying to you and then you prolong the relationship until you are 27, 28 before you now realize ah, this guy really has a wife and two children somewhere your life is devastated and you are now in desperation running elder scatter from one prayer house to another prayer house from one prophet to another prophetess looking for a husband or looking for a wife I will tell you what to do at the end of this. What I'm doing right now is analyzing some of the reasons. Because the Bible says, it says, examine yourself to see whether you are still in the faith. A lot of times, we don't do thorough examinations. We want somebody else to do our job for us. So we are in a hurry to run to prayer houses. God says, sit down. Isaiah 118, let us listen together. That's why God gave you sense. So that you can think. But people won't reason. They want somebody to do all the reasoning for them. And then they will be a lot happier. If they would just come to them and just say, Oh, it is one, one native doctor that has collected your picture. That is doing something. <laughs> First Corinthians 11.28 let a man examine himself. 2 Corinthians 13 verse 5. Examine yourself. Whether you are in the faith. Prove your own self. Don't you know your own self? How that Jesus is in you. Except you are reprobate. Examine. Sit down. Put your brain to work. Analyze issues. Why are things the way they, they look? Things that common self should solve. You can pray until you die. It will solve it. There are issues that common sense will solve. There are issues that prayers will solve. There are issues that extraordinary miracles will solve. But common sense things, God won't wake in the morning and send a prophet to you that you should take bread and egg. You make that decision for yourself. Sit down and analyze yourself. 
and your life and see where things have gone wrong. Because until you identify a problem and you diagnose it correctly, then you can't find the solution. I hope I'm helping someone listening to me on this broadcast. Reason number eight, poor self-image. Poor comportment and unattractive looking has been one of the reasons that I kept a lot of people not getting a life partner. You are just a 19, 22, 23 year old girl, 19 year old girl, but when you dress, you dress like a grandmother in the name of holiness. You are looking like a woman that is a widow that is being believed. Poor self image. Take care of yourself. Taking care of yourself does not mean expensive clothing. If it's only two clothes you have, let them be clean. Let them be neat. Make yourself look good. Be cheerful. You know, a cheerful countenance do it good. Just like a medicine. People will love, you know, there's a covenant that is in Malachi. I mean, in Deuteronomy chapter 28. He said, he said, bless is your going in. Bless is your going out. He said, God will make you a delightsome person. Deuteronomy 28. You will make you a delightsome person. People want to get around you. Poor self-esteem, poor self-courage, looking so ugly and terrible and smelly and dirty has kept some people for so long until the prime of their season have passed. Number nine reason. Believing the lies of phony prophets. There are a lot of people, and I'm a prophet of God. I want you to know that. I've occupied the prophetic office and I still do. And I prophesy, I see vision for people's life. But you see, God didn't call prophets in the New Testament to run people's life for them. In the Old Testament, prophets run your life. In the New Testament, Romans chapter 8, read verse 14, read verse 15, read verse 16, as many, read verse 12, as many as are the sons of God are led by the Spirit of God. So there are a lot of phony people around out there who make money by prophesying. So they will be prophesying one problem or the other around your life so that they can keep you under control of collecting money from you. Romans 8 14, as many as are the sons of God are led by God, not as many as are led by prophets are the sons of God. I've never I don't I endeavor to not run people's life by the prophetic gifting that I carry because it is not scriptural under the New Testament. Many of you have surrendered your life permanently to prophets. There are people, there was a military officer, senior military officer, a commander, actually was even a general at some point. That I've never met before. And the day I met him, I told him about his life. He shook. He was used to visiting marabouts and native doctors. And I has not seen a man of God that was able to tell him about his life. And I predicted things for him in his life. He got married to a wonderful wife. He had, he had been unpromoted for several years. He got promoted from captain to major. His promotion came in. When he had some difficulty as a colonel, he came to me again. I Pray for him, blessed him, became a general in the army. And so he got used to me. Anytime he wants to do something, we need and say, Excuse, I want you to help me to see. I say, No, it is not the will of God that I should take over your life and run your life. Don't always run to me to help you see as a seer. I taught him how to listen and hear God by himself. Because under the New Testament, you are not supposed to take people's life over and be manipulating and managing it so that it can be of financial resort unto you. So many of your lives are run. By prophet, you won't do a thing until you have consulted your prophetess. If you are not born again, get born again. After you get born again, go and receive the spirit of God, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, so that you can hear God when he's speaking to you. You can listen to him when he's speaking to you. It has delayed a lot of people. Now, number 10. Reasons. There are a lot of ladies who have not made up their mind in good time. I have ladies now that I know that I'm relating to that are more than 40 years old. Sometimes, age picking up on you is not even the reason that men won't approach you. I have ladies that are more than 40 years that there is hardly two men passing by without a man, a young person saying, I want to marry you, I want to marry you, but they are undecided. Their problem is not even a man. Their problem is not making up their mind. Sometimes, if you wait for so long, your mind are made up because of so many reasons, 
it might get to some point where you will not pass the prime of your age, where the young people can no longer look up to you anymore because you are now maybe 45, maybe 47. Then you are only thinking of somebody who has probably lost his wife, who is a widow or a widower, you know, to look to you as a boy or a girl. And those are things you take care of. So why have I listed all this? I have listed all this to free someone listening to me that it's not all the time that there is a delay in your life that delay is caused by a witch or by one wizard somewhere. Some simple common sense things we need to do are essential to releasing our miracle. Now, you ask me, what do I do? I'm going to pray a prayer in the next 60 seconds. If it is a mistake of the past, or some satanic something that is holding you. Because in reality, yes, the last one will be the fact that there can be some satanic gang up against your life. But that is the one that a lot of people center on. Not apart from all the ones I mentioned. If they want to center on, it is satanic, you know, gang up. It is some, uh, maybe your mother's, uh, uh, the concubine of your father, or your father's second wife. They spend all the time on that. It is not impossible that people can diabolically try to slow up your life, which will have been my number 10 reason. But I want you to know anything that has the hand of Satan inside is the one that God can dismiss very easily. And if that is your own case, I'm going to go pray a prayer that is going to bring down the building of the wicked on top of his head. Then second thing to do, if you realize a few of the mistakes that you have made from the explanation I have given, correct it. I'm going to ask for the favor of God upon your life. Can we pray now? Holy Father, in the name of Jesus, the Bible says, any tree that your, our father did not plant shall be uprooted. The listener to me today, the delay in your life, if it is as a result of satanic manipulation of your destiny, or because of some mistakes you have made before while serving the devil, that's why you have delayed for all this long. I uproot that delay now in the name of Jesus. I release a miracle for you and I'm moved by God as I'm praying this prayer. May the next six months produce for you a miracle that is going to establish your life and lead to a successful marriage in the name of Jesus. For people who have been surcharged for years because of circumstances of your birth, I'm asking the God of heaven to restore the year that the cankerworm have eaten. To restore the wasted years in the name of Jesus. To people who have brought upon themselves where they are in because they have lived ungodly life and they now repented at a late stage in their life. They started all over again. The God of speed will grant you speed. You will catch up your wasted years will be restored, renewed, and redeemed. In the name of Jesus, I release you into God's manifest favor. In Jesus' mighty name. In case you want to call, you can call 090-5908-7807. Or reach us on Facebook, Isaac Cram. Or go to YouTube and check Isaac Cram Media. M-E-D-I-A. And you will get a lot of material that can help you. I release you to the hands of God for his manifest blessing in Jesus' name. Take it back, take it back, take it back, take it back.